Good morning, everyone. Please stand up. Uh, We'll begin our worship together. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for this morning, uh, this beautiful morning, a chance to come into your presence, to worship, sing of you, um, and to encounter you in a new and deep way. We pray that you would be in our midst, Lord, that you would bless us with your presence, that you would meet us in your word and at your table. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Remain standing for our opening hymn. is a tune that you know well, but these lyrics are a little different than what you know. They're powerful, especially as we enter into this, this season as a church, walking through a deeply formed life. So as we pray these words together and declare these words together, we know that God is in our midst. Sing this with us. As we gather at your table, as we listen to your Help us know, oh God, your presence. Let our hearts and minds be stirred. Nourish us with sacred story until we claim it as our own. Teach us through this holy banquet how to make love's victory known. Turn our worship into witness in the sacraments of life. Send us forth to love and serve you, bringing peace where there is strife. Give us Christ, your great compassion, to forgive as you forgave. May we still behold your image in the world you died to save. Gracious Spirit, gracious Spirit, help us summon other guests to share that feast. Where triumphant love will welcome those who have been last and least. There no more will envy bind us, nor will pride our peace destroy. As we join with saints and angels to repeat the sounding joy. Now we join with saints and angels to repeat the sounding joy. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Together, let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. My hope is found He is my light, my strength, my song This cornerstone, this solid ground Firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are stilled, when striving cease My comforter all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless babe, 
this gift of love and righteousness scorned by the ones he came to save till on the cross as jesus died the wrath of god was satisfied for every sin on him was laid here in the death of christ i live There in the ground his body lay, light of the world by darkness slain. Then bursting forth in glorious day, up from the grave he rose again. And as he stands in victory, since curse has lost its grip on me, for I his and he is mine bought with the precious blood of christ no guilt in life no fear in death this is the power of christ in me from life's first cry to final breath jesus commands my destiny no power of hell, no steam of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. No power of hell, no steam of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he turns or calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stand my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest but holy on Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand when darkness fades
God, we uh, acknowledge our desire to be people of love, joy, and peace. Um, to be people who spread your fruit, Lord, in the world. And we also acknowledge that we can't do any of those things without you. Um, we can't be a people of love without you. We can't be a people of joy without you. We can't be a people of peace without you. And we acknowledge, Lord, that we have nothing to offer the world but you. 
So Lord, would you come and would you remind us of your steadfast love that never wavers even when we do, uh, that is always there for us. We thank you that you are a God of love, joy, and peace. And Lord, we, as we move into a time of confession, uh, we pray that you would draw to mind those things that have been a barrier uh, between us and you and us and others this week. Let us sit or kneel as we move into a time of confession. <clears throat> Together, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Now may Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you. O oh God, you know that we are set in the midst of many grave dangers, and because of the frailty of our nature, we cannot always stand upright. Grant that your strength and protection may support us in all dangers and carry us through every temptation, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. This morning's lesson is from the first letter to the Corinthians. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged if his conscience is weak to eat food offered to idols? And so by your knowledge this weak person is destroyed, the brother of whom Christ died. Thus sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it's weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I'll never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright, in the congregation. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works by giving them the land of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. This is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord <clears throat> And he called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart, but his stomach, and is expelled? Thus he declared all foods clean." And he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. 
For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Do be seated. And um, I'd like to introduce to you uh, a friend of mine, a member of the congregation, Samantha. Would you come and join me? And uh, in, in, I can't remember when it was. At some point last year, December, uh, we, come on up, uh, we interviewed just ordinary people uh, about their experience here at St. Bart's just to kind of get a feel for what God's doing. And uh, we thought we'd carry it out through the, through the other times outside of December. And so I uh, tried to get Samantha to share, and we uh, finally got to this date. And so I'm just going to ask Samantha a few questions, and uh, we'll go from there. So Samantha, tell us, how long have you and Mike and the family been coming to St. Bart's? I have to go back in my memory for this. <clears throat> um, and just context for everybody, because it all, the rest of the story all matters to this, is that Mike and I lived in Dallas until about 2015, early 2015, and then we moved to Chicago. When we left, we were like, oh, we may not stay in Chicago, but we're never going back to Dallas. <laughs> so in June of 2018, we moved back, and I think probably visited around November of that year, and I think by like February 2019, we were probably like, yeah, we're going here. So that was an afternoon service at Central Lutheran down yep. the road, With and, uh, and so you've been coming, and tell us, we um, have two boys. Yes, Beckett and, and Silas. Um, Beckett and Silas. And tell us, um, what has, like in the last year, it's been a bit of a, I mean, we keep saying the year can't be any harder than the previous, which is kind of a thing we need to stop saying. Uh, but tell us, in this last year, some things have happened. Tell us, what's God been doing in y'all's life in this last year? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yes, we keep jinxing ourselves. So um, this year is just going to be a year. We're not going to jinx it. Um, but um, so when we arrived in Dallas, we were pretty battered and bruised. Um, we had been through a lot of really painful things. Um, in our time there, we uh, had our first son. We also buried Mike's dad 10 weeks later and had traveled uh, multiple times. I was in grad school and I was working and I was doing all these things and we kind of just showed up battered and bruised. Um, we moved here and I had multiple um, pretty painful and difficult miscarriages. Um, and we, I said, I'm done, I'm good. Um, turns out I was six weeks pregnant. So <laughs> we had Silas and we said, okay, it's gonna be better, it's gonna be different. He was born February 7th, 2020, five weeks before the world shut down. Um, <laughs> and so coming into this year, we were just like, panting out of breath from so much sprinting, so many hard things that have happened. Um, and I did something that was very scary for me, uh, and I came to Alpha. Um, and I would consider myself a Christian, I'd consider myself a member of this church, but uh, it was scary. It was still really scary to come. Um, and to really, I, I told you, Dave, that I would call it like small acts of rebellion. Will you still accept me if I drop an F-bomb here? Will you still accept me if I tell you I haven't read my Bible in a while? You know, like just trying to make sure that um, we could be accepted as we are, as we're coming, because um, people haven't always done that. <laughs> um, I had a friend actually tell me once that she needed me to go to church because I was her Christian mom friend. And she only had room for me to be that in her life, and therefore I needed to be that. Um, That's such a Dallas thing to say. <laughs> yeah. Reasons I didn't want to move back to Dallas. <laughs> Here we are. Um, and the church has just continued to show up to make space for us to say, um, faith is not certainty. It's the opposite of certainty. It's leaning into our doubts and saying, I'm going to take a step of faith. Where logic ends, 
I, I'm just gonna keep going. Um, I'm gonna take that leap, I'm gonna take that step and, and put faith into practice. Um, and you and Rachel and so many people here have created space for us to do that, so. Uh, and tell us, um, so you did Alpha, I see you've signed up for Deeply Formed Life. Yep. So we didn't turn you off. You didn't scare me away. <laughs> um, what else has happened? Because I know there, um, or let me ask it this way. So what practical difference has it made in the day to day? Because you're now, um, you know, an executive at a company, your Mike works full time, mm -hmm. you've got two kids, a lot's happening. And so, you know, what practical difference has what God's in your life made your the everyday? Yeah. Um, so when I was a young girl, I was 100% convinced that I would be the first female president of the United States. Still chance. Unfortunately, the role's still open. Um, and so I, um, was in grad school becoming a mom and working, um, all during the 2016 presidential election. And that had a really big impact on me and um, I felt like people within the church were um, ostracizing me for continuing to go in. In fact, someone said, by prioritizing your career, don't you think you're diminishing the, you know, like authority of your husband in the home? And I was like, what? How, like, how, how did we get there? Um, and so I felt the need to dig in to prove that I could do all of that all the time. Um, and I did. I dug in and I ran myself out, but I dug in and I did it all. Um, and over the past year, as I've been able to land in a space where I know that I'm accepted, um, I know I can't do it. <laughs> Y'all, I cannot do it. My life is not all put together. Um, ask me about recent travel experiences or anything else if you want to think, like, if you're like, oh, you got it all together. I promise you I don't. Um, and, you know, I think it really came to a head for us, Dave, in December. Um, our youngest son, Silas, had been sick for a while. And um, at the beginning of December, they hospitalized him. Um, I'm going to tell you now that he's okay. But the journey to getting there was scary. Um, because a lot of his symptoms were mimicking cancer. And so they hospitalized him. Um, and I just remember laying over him as they were placing his IV. Um, there's nothing more helpless. There's no more feeling of helplessness than that as a parent. Um, and I remember just praying. Um, and the, it, it wasn't because I was like, oh, I should pray right now. It was because literally that was all that just came forth and spilled out of me um, as I laid there and just prayed for him. Um, and you were one of the very, very few people that I reached out to in that season. I reached out to two friends who could help with Beckett, our oldest. I reached out to my parents and I reached out to you for prayers. Um, and seeing the church show up um, with prayer, with um, practical help of just bringing us meals while we were rotating through the, you know, staying in the hospital with Silas and just so many things um, made all the difference. And my coworkers have seen that too, um, how I lead. Uh, my teams, they, they see that. Um, they see that I come as an open book. Um, I come as I am because I know I can be accepted because I've learned that for real this time, that I can be accepted as I am, and so I can show up that way in all of my life. Round of applause. <laughs> Why don't you, don't go anywhere, just uh, stretch out a hand of prayer, a blessing. We're gonna pray for Samantha and the family. Lord, we love Mike and Samantha and the boys, and we pray your blessing on them. Uh, we dare to pray that you not only would keep uh, it up, and you keep moving in their lives, but that this year would be the best year in recent memory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Samantha. There we are. So let's, um, 
I really don't know how to follow that, but uh, I will attempt um, since for contractual obligations, I, I need to. So, um, but I, I, want, I want us to focus on that because what Samantha said is really at the heart of what we're attempting to do for the next five months, which is life is gonna carry on as normal. The world will do what the world will do. Uh, things will happen in the large, big scale, on the, on the big stage of life. And then unexpected things that we don't see, we have no idea, uh, will happen as well. And the world in the last, in my opinion, in case you're wondering, uh, in the last four years has continuously looked to experts to help us make sense of values and these very complex situations. And in my opinion, what East Dallas and what the wider world is looking for is they're looking no longer to the experts, though we do need experts uh, in, their, in their lanes helping inform how we make decisions and understand things, but I believe that where we are as a culture is we're looking for ordinary people to help us reconcile the matters of faith with these complex issues. And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. And that's really when we meet together once a month over the next five months in this uh, experiment we're calling the Deeply Formed Life, um, is that's what we're going to try to do. And so we don't need to be armchair experts, though I am incredibly good in a number of fields of speaking with authority on subjects I know nothing about. <laughs> Just ask me about college football. Man, I can say it, and I don't know what I'm talking about. So let's turn to our passage, uh, and it's in your bulletin. We're going to look at this really, uh, these two passages that have one thing in common. They all center around food, uh, which is why when we meet for Deep Form Life, we will eat. In fact, our new uh, vision statement for the church is when we meet, we eat. <laughs> I, I like it. I think it'll work. We got that from uh, a marketing firm. Um, and uh, let me just say this, that de the Deeply Formed Life book isn't for us a sociological guide of how we're going to navigate these issues. Rather, it's an attempt as a community to read something that is really well written, that is really well thought through, and give us an opportunity to respect the text because a child of God has written it. And uh, he's actually, in the eyes of King Jesus, a blood relative, all right? So we're going to respect the text, and we're also free to disagree with it at points. And it's really an opportunity to explore five values that we believe will help us as ordinary people reconcile our faith with complex issues. And the first two chapters, uh, so the, the, the chapters come in pairs, and you have uh, the theory and then the practice. And so tomorrow night, for those of you registered, we're looking at this idea of contemplative rhythms with the premise that we have to slow down to catch up to God. We have to slow down to catch up with God. Uh, I happened to grow up in the Anglican Church, and um, I will admit that even though I grew up in a church that celebrated sacramental rhythms, I didn't fully come to appreciate it, uh, the power of these, what I'll call sacramental rhythms, until I was in my third year of theological college, where I chose not to do a church placement, because I didn't want to work on Sundays, is the real reason. And so I opted for the other placement that I had to write to get included. And there was a phone interview, and it was for the spirituality placement. And I was told that I would need a spiritual director that would be assigned to me, and it would be by, by interview via phone. Now, this is before, so I'm in England. There are no cell phones like we know them. And so I had to go down to the office to borrow the phone. And uh, this uh, man, John Edmund Seal, an Anglican priest and spiritual director, uh, the interview consisted of one question. What is it you want? <laughs> I was like, 
well, I can't say I don't want to work on Sundays. So I just kind of, you know, tried to fudge it. And I said, I've got a grasp on God as Father. I understand the power of the Holy Spirit and the gifts. I have a few of them. But I said, to be honest, I just don't really feel like I know Jesus. <laughs> One answer, so British. She said, fine, hung up. <laughs> and then I got a card saying that I was to meet him at this office at 2 o'clock on Tuesday. And so I was like, all right, this will be interesting, but at least I don't have to work on Sunday. And uh, so when we met, we sat, and I was struck by just how ordinary this guy looked. He was um, below average in height. He was softly spoken. He told me his previous career was as, as an anesthesiologist. So I'm like, you help people go to sleep professionally? <laughs> yes. And you're a spiritual director? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. And he says, all right, um, well, David, um, before we start, let's just have a moment of quiet. I said, all right. And he it was just it was quiet. He was just still. I don't know if you've ever done that with someone. And it's not that he was just stop speaking. But what I know now is he was present to God in the stillness of that moment, I was awkward. You know, the prayer was like, Lord, are you getting anything out of this? I don't think I am, you know. <laughs> and then, uh, like, the moment of, like, five seconds was over. And it just carried on. And all of a sudden, I found myself bursting into tears. I was utterly confused. And John saw, and he said, why are you crying? And I said, well, I don't know, but we're so busy. This was the September. We were, Rachel and I were married in December, so this three months beforehand, and our lives were so busy, and I had assignments I was doing. And I said, I don't know, but there's something special, something special just happened. And he said, what you've done is you've stepped out of the current of your busy life, and you've been present to God in the stillness. I said, well, I think that's what you did, and I think that's what I have to learn how to do. <laughs> and, and again, what struck me, what was so encouraging, is John was completely like Acts 4, verse 13, which says that they were ordinary men who knew Jesus. And here is this very ordinary man who really introduced me, not to the concept of Jesus, but he said we met every week for nine months and I'd have these prayer exercises to do which some were brutal some were less brutal and it really helped me see that to know what Jesus is like we just have to stop not forever because you won't get anything done but you do have to stop and so Chris and I are in agreement that we think that the most difficult chapters of this book are the first two. Because today, slowing down is not just the hardest thing to do, it's the one thing we don't want to do. I mean, we say we do. But often we don't, pl I don't plan it in, I'll speak for myself. Slow down. But as Tom Wright says, you have to slow down in order to catch up to God. And what helps us and what we believe here at St. Bart's is that God has given us these sacramental rhythms. And the, the, what, what's a sacramental rhythm? Well, there are things that we do that help us cultivate an inward sense of his love for us. An inward sense of his peace, of his faithfulness, of his goodness. They help us to step out of the current of life that's swirling around us so that we, we can be centered on him. Some of these things we do together. Some of these things we can only do on our own. And the question is why? Well, Jesus addresses the problem for us in verse 14 of Mark 7. So if you look down on verse, uh, page 4 of your bulletin, we have this incredible Culturally strange 
thing to us at the moment because purity in food, unless, you know, I guess it's, it's reared its head again as uh, the nutrition industry's kind of taken off. But we see here that Jesus is having a conversation with the disciples in a very public way in the hearing of the Pharisees. And he, so he calls the people to him. And in the NIV it says that he said, listen to me. Here in the ESV it says, hear me, all of you, and understand. There's nothing outside a person that by going into them can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. The problem of the defiled heart is much deeper than one might assume and significantly more serious than mere ceremonial impurity. It's more serious than just having everything on the outside look perfect. Because the core problem isn't one of outward form, but rather it's one of what's inside the heart. The things that come out, not the things that go in. And so that racism is alive today in our school system isn't because they're overhearing people say it in public. It's because often they're hearing their parents say things in private that they think they can say out loud. And so it's not what goes in, but it's actually what comes out of the heart. Let me illustrate it this way. This is as good as we get as for demonstrations. But imagine that this cup is your heart. And it's actually full of vinegar. And imagine Chris comes up and he spills the cup. And we've got a spill. Now, did Chris put the vinegar in the cup? No, I did. All he did was do something that revealed what was in my heart. Now it's actually water, right? <laughs> What's in our heart leaks out, gets tipped over. And sometimes uh, it's what's in our heart that when we find someone we disagree with and we have a very strong reaction against, it's not really the conversation, but it's what's in the heart. I remember at a Connect Group meeting at a previous church, I found myself, and only in Dallas has this happened, I found myself in heated agreement with someone. <laughs> and, and I had to stop this person and say, look, I'm, I'm right there with you, I agree. And she just kept on. I said, look, I don't know what's going on, but I feel like you're beating me up as I agree with you. <laughs> and she stopped. And I said, what's going on? And she told me how she'd just um, been in a relationship, and it, she found out that the man she was dating had betrayed her, and da, 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 And it was just this, oh, it was awful. And I said, I'm so Sorry. And so the argument wasn't about the argument that we agreed on. It's about what was in her heart got tipped over because as a man, I represented men to her and it tipped the cup of what was in her heart. And so Jesus, and so let me ask you, what's in your heart this morning? What's in your heart this morning? In verse 17 and 18, Jesus carries on. He, when he, they entered the house, so now they're in the private setting, and they left the people. His disciples keep asking him about the parable. I love that the disciples don't get it. And he said to them, then are you also without understanding? And this is where Jesus uses potty humor. Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him since it enters not his heart but his stomach and is expelled? And the word expelled there means goes into the latrine. All right, so what you eat, you poop out, Jesus says. <laughs> and he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. So Jesus, on one hand, is using potty humor, and here he also says something very disturbing. He says, with a blistering commentary on the state of religion, that while the Pharisees attempted to honor God by what they did outwardly, they failed to do so because of the state of their heart. It's relatively easy to do the right things or even say the right things. We can obey all the rules of the community and yet our hearts can be far away from God. 
And God isn't so concerned about the outward appearance, but he is absolutely concerned about the heart. And so verses 20 to 23, if you look down, Jesus repeats his earlier teaching, what comes out of a person. And here he mentions very specific thoughts and actions and characteristics of what can be tipped out of your heart. What's interesting, though, in this passage is that Jesus doesn't hint at the cure. He doesn't tell us what the cure is for a heart that needs cleansing. But we do see him say something very powerful in verse 14. Listen to me. Listening to Jesus is the key of life. How do we listen? I mean, there are so many memes. I mean, I just got to sit there because every time I scroll up, there's another meme that is hilarious, slightly insightful, relatively useless. Jesus says, listen to me. The Holy Spirit is inviting us as a community to join Jesus in sacramental rhythms where we can listen to him in order to experience his goodness, find rest for our souls, and be empowered by his love. So in a moment, what are we going to do? In a moment, Taylor, we're going to stand up. We're going to say the creed together. Then we're going to pass the peace. We're going to, not too long, because we, you know, we got to get done by a certain time, but we're going to welcome each other. Some of you are new. You're going to meet you know, somebody who's been here before in a less awkward setting. Um, and what else we're going to do? We're going to move then from the peace to Holy Communion where we're going to come up and we're going to celebrate and recite what Jesus did in order for us to have a pure heart. And then we're not just going to say it, but then we're going to gather around a table. We're not going to take it. We're going to receive the bread and the wine. We're going to feast on his body and his blood. Why? So that we can feed on him by faith with thanksgiving and so that our hearts can be strengthened. And then after you've received at the back, you have the special forces of the prayer team who are there for you. So that if you have a need, which you all have needs... And if you choose to risk, like Samantha talked about, you can go and receive prayer. And they will stand with you and they will pray for you. Pray for you. And we do other things together. And these are the sacramental rhythms that we do together. But they're also things that we do on our own that can only be done on our own. I find the slow reading of Scripture to be inherently helpful to me. I've read the Bible in a year. It's brutal because I'm always racing through it. And yet if I take a verse and I consider the verse for a whole week and I just chew on it and think about what God might be saying through this verse, to me in the season of my life, it helps. Uh, people will use um, the Lectio, Lectio 365 app here in the church. There's both one for families, one for uh, Adults, I find the family one causes less arguments on the way to school in the morning. I can say, shh, Jesus is speaking. <laughs> there are other tools like centering prayer that are just uh, equally helpful. And we will have recommendations for you on the night that we discuss. Because Jesus had this incredibly odd habit, didn't he? Arguably, he's the worst social media influencer that ever existed because he never capitalized on a moment to increase fame. Something incredible would happen, he would disappear. He would retreat. He would step out of the current of life to recenter himself in his Father's presence. You know, as a charismatic, I'm always saying, Lord, I want your presence. As a contemplative, I've had to learn to be present to God, hopefully in all things, at all moments. Doesn't, I, I, I'm no expert. I'm in the, the back of the class for that. And so the year ahead is full of uncertainty, and yet one thing is certain. 
you and I are being invited by the Holy Spirit to develop a deep, heartfelt connection with him through these sacramental rhythms. These rhythms tie us together as a community so that we can journey together and all that is required of you, all that's required of me is to accept the Lord's invitation. As I said in the beginning, my hunch is, is that what our world is looking for is what Luke writes in Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Our world is looking for ordinary people who know Jesus, where they can look at someone who doesn't have a massive following, who isn't making money on it, but has just learned how to be present to God so that they can spend time with Jesus. And so I'm going to ask you, and you don't have to do this, all can, how does it go? All can, none must, some will, just to take a little step this morning as a sign that you are willing, as far as you can discern your own heart, to take a step of trust towards that invitation. Doesn't mean you're going to come back next week and be experts, but it's a willingness to take a step so that what's in your heart can be turned from vinegar to water. I'd say water to wine, but then that leads to a whole lot of pastoral discussions. But to turn from vinegar to wine. And this is what I'm going to ask you to do. In a moment, I'm going to, say a sim- I'm going to invite you to stand. I'm going to say a prayer. And, ch- and you're not even going to have to leave your seat. But Rachel and I have done this a number of times, and we'll imagine there's this imaginary line in front of us on the carpet. And as a sign of trust, we'll just take a step forward and say, Lord, I have... Sometimes I know what I'm doing. Sometimes I have no idea what I'm doing. What I'm trying to do is follow you. Lead me deeper. Amen? Why don't we stand? Lord, we've heard in your word that we can be people of joy, love, and peace. And be a people that disagree on some things. If we go deep with you, Jesus. And so now, Lord, in your name, we choose to take a very small, a baby step, if you will, of faith. And and choose to respond to your invitation as best we can. Knowing that you love us and you accept us as as we are. And that you long to lead, lead us deeper and do all that you have for us. And so, for those of us who are ready, and if you're not ready, that's absolutely fine. In your name, Jesus, we take that baby step of faith and respond to that invitation. Amen. Amen. As we're standing, let's open up our bulletins. To page five, and together let's affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, and he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share with one another a sign of God's peace. Have y'all recorded his story yet? No. no. Oh, you.
singing, whoa! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> wow, this is really loud. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone. <laughs> uh, my name is Hannah. Uh, I work here at St. Bart's. My title is executive assistant, so, you know, that means I do all the fun things. Um, this morning, uh, I want to remind any newcomers here to um, pull off the connection card at the back of your bulletin. You can just tear it off. Um, and I also want to invite you to come to the newcomers brunch that is um, today at Maya's. I will be there. Dave, Chris, Jen, Katie, Children's Ministry Director will be there as well. So um, we would love to meet you. If you can come, just come. Um, we also have Deeply Formed Life tomorrow, um, reading, we'll discuss chapters one and two together. Um, unfortunately, registration is full at this point, but you may be able to come for February, depending on who registers. So, reminder that if you have registered for January, you will have to register again for February. So, you should probably get on that. It opens tomorrow. Um, the intro to St. Bart's class is starting February 4th with Chris, and Dave will come in and out of that as well. Um, that's just where you can learn more about St. Bart's, the Anglican tradition, and um, you even get to hear about like how you can serve with us and what the children's ministry does on Sunday mornings. Um, and then a few other things, Pancake Night, February uh, 13th, is at like come and go between 4.30 and 6.30. Um, just come with your families, and we get to feast together before Lent begins, which Ash Wednesday is that next day, February 14th, which is at 6 p.m. There's only an evening service, so everybody, we hope you can come. Okay, that's all I got. <laughs> Prayer teams are in the back. <laughs> uh, Chris and I just both agreed that, Hannah, you're much better than we are at announcements. Uh, so we're going to move now to uh, Holy Communion, and you know the church does this in so many different ways. How we do it is you're going to be invited uh, to come forward and to place your hands like this, and there'll be three stations at the front, and the bread will be uh, entinted into the wine for you and placed in your hands. Uh, if you would like the gluten-free option, place your hands like this. That'll be uh, assigned to us. If you would... Uh, rather not receive, we'd encourage you to come forward for a blessing, um, and we'll pray God's blessing on you. If you would like communion and a blessing, we are offering a limited time offer of a two-for-one deal. So just go like this. I just got to get the dynamics right of how you get the bread in your mouth before you get the blessing, but we'll leave it to that. As we come to the Lord's table, can I encourage you to humble yourselves under the hand of Almighty God, and He will lift you up to cast all your burdens on Him because He cares for you. Oh, come. 
up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but you came to meet us in your Son. You embrace us as your children and welcome us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. On the night that he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. Likewise, at the end of supper, he took the cup of wine and gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit, that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, Make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you the sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Who comes in the name 
Would you sit or kneel as we sing together the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is. this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from me for thine is the kingdom, the power and glory forever. Amen. We are because he is. We are one body. Draw near with faith. Friends, these are the gifts of God, and they're given to you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Stepped down from 
from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name Jesus Christ my living hope let's sing that verse too one more time who could imagine so great a mercy Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? And the God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken. I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me His own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name Jesus Christ my living hope and then came the that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me let's sing that together and then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me jesus yours is the victory Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope jesus christ jesus christ my living hope 
Jesus Christ, my living hope. And Lord, that's our prayer, is that we would leave here filled with a hope that breathes life to the rest of our week. And so we thank you for feeding us with your body and blood and enabling us to feast on your presence. Would you go ahead of us into the week that awaits us and teach us how to be present to you wherever we find ourselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Do be seated just for a moment. Who's celebrating a birthday this week? We'd like to pray for you. Any birthday boys and girls? Yes. No? Okay. Any birthday? No? Okay. All right. This is the one week a year we don't pray for birthday. Chris, would you like to have a birthday this week? No? All right. That's next week. All right. Having just seated, this is just warming you up for outside. Why don't we stand and let's pray our prayer for mission into the world this week. We call it liturgical calisthenics. Let's pray together. Father, help us to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help us to give ourselves away to others, being kind to everyone we meet. Spirit, help us to love the lost, proclaiming Christ in all we do and say, Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you this week forevermore. Amen. Please remain standing for our closing hymn. Turn our worship into witness. Turn our worship into witness in the sacrament of life. Send us forth to love and serve you, bringing peace where there is strife. Give us, Christ, your great compassion to forgive as you forgave. May we still behold your image in the world you died to save. Summon other guests to share that feast Where triumphant love will welcome Those who have been last and least There no more will envy blind us Nor will pride our peace destroy As we join with saints and angels to repeat the sounding joy, now we join with saints and angels to repeat the sounding joy. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>